Dear colleagues, I want to introduce you to a modern glaucoma management option with an implant-free MIC approach. I have to state that I have no financial interest in the technologies or data presented. Minimally invasive glaucoma surgery procedures become more and more popular. The definition of MIX usually includes an up internal approach, minimally trauma uh, compared to a trabeculectomy, quite an efficient IOP reduction compared to drugs or lasers, and a higher safety profile and a faster recovery compared to traditional surgery. The aim of the MIX procedures is to overcome the outflow resistance, which is on the trabecular meshwork level, Schlems canal, but also the collector channels. And the goal is to overcome all three hurdles to facilitate the outflow and to reduce the pressure. Glaucoma treatment is quite a complex uh, story with an algorithm depending on the type of disease and the uh, level of uh, advanced damage. Uh, Mix procedures are usually applied in mild open angle glaucoma and this also applies for HFDS which is usually done in moderate to mild open angle glaucoma but also has a place in more advanced glaucoma, especially after failed uh, traditional surgery, uh, where mix uh, uh, options and also HFDS absolutely can be an option. The various options for treating glaucoma have, a ver have various uh, risk profiles, and this is a graph displaying the various options regarding their pressure reducing effect and their risk level on the right hand side. You see of course uh, medical uh, glaucoma treatment and things like SLT on the left hand side with of course a very uh, good risk profile but also a reduced effect regarding reducing the pressure and then on the other side on the right hand side trabeculectomy and tube shunts with a a very high risk level, but also a, a very uh, a high potential to really reduce control the pressure. HFDS actually is here on the left hand side in, in the mid range. So we have uh, quite a good potential to really control the pressure, but the risk level is definitely beneficial. It is uh, better than Xen, for example, or canaloplasty uh, and, and, and similar procedures. HFDS stands for High Frequency Deep Sclerotomy. Initially, it was invented by Professor Boyan Paich and he called it STT, sclerotalamotomy. But uh, HFDS is actually the better term because this is what it's actually doing. It's a deep sclerotomy using a high frequency approach. Um, this option comes with all early FACO platforms, so even the small cataract, um, cataracts machine uh, offers this uh, option, but also the Pharos and the OS4 platform uh, also for the posterior segment, they have all these high frequency options included. It comes with a glaucoma tip um, that has a tiny, tiny uh, tip at the end and the, so this option can be applied to, as mentioned, mild to moderate open angle glaucoma, but it can be combined with a cataract surgery, which is usually done, or as a standalone procedure, uh, especially if the patient is already pseudophagic. The application of the deep sclerotomy is in the angle um, underneath Schwalb's line and above the scleral spur. Um, so we go through the tabrecal meshwork, through Schlem's canal, into the intrascleral collector channels. Um, the angle is quite simple to visualize and to identify the structures, as you will see uh, in the next slides. The surgery steps, of course, involve some form of anesthesia. Um, I I perform usually HFDS combined with cataract procedure and then whatever anesthesia I use for the cataract is usually uh, enough also to do the uh, HFDS. 
The cornea is uh, moistened with a method cell to make contact with the uh, angle visualizing a glass and a 1.2 millimeter, usually temporal uh, access to the anterior chamber is created. And then um, we use intracamal myocol to create meiosis, which is not absolutely mandatory, especially if you do a combined procedure with FACO. Uh, the angle is usually deep enough that it can also be done while the iris is still uh, enlarged. Of course, you fill the anterior chamber with OVD to really nicely uh, open the angle by pressing the iris back and to, to make enough space to introduce uh, the tip into the angle. Intraoperative visualization is usually done with a direct gonioscope. The patient's head is tilted a little bit away from the surgeon, 30 degrees, and the microscope is tilted and this allows a easy direct visualization of the structures in the chamber angle. This is a, a picture of how this looks intraoperatively and the setup is done within one minute or 90 seconds to, uh, during the cataract procedure. The HFDS glaucoma tip is inserted through the clear cornea incision and then crosses the anterior chamber and is positioned in the desired point on the other side of the anterior chamber. The tip is inserted into the tissue underneath Schwalbe's line and above the scleral spur, usually through the pigmented part of the trapezoidal meshwork, which is very easy uh, to be visualized and identified intraoperatively. It's usually adversable to first inside the tip and then put the, the gonioglass in, in, in place because with the gonio in place it's very difficult to find the access to the anterior chamber again. Um, after inserting the tip at the right spot you apply uh, pressure on the uh, foot pedal and advance the tip a little bit into the tissue and the machine will give you three beeping sounds when the procedure is over and you withdraw the tip from the site of application and then do the, the next pocket adjacent to the area and it's used traditionally we do six uh, of these pockets within the angle of visualization without removing the, the gonio. The application of HFDS will create a pocket of 0.3 millimeters in height, 0.6 wide and one millimeter depth and this will as explained before, go through um, all three steps of resistance into the sclera and thanks to the high frequency effect, this uh, pocket will actually stay open. This is how you see it under the operating microscope and you see here on the right hand side that actually some bleeding is occurring out of the created pockets which is a good sign um, if you really overcome the outflow resistance, there will be a little bit backflow of blood out of the collector channels. And that's actually a good prognostic sign for an efficient uh, pressure reduction. If there's no bleeding from the angle, the chances that the pressure will be uh, controlled long term are reduced. This is a histological analysis of one of these sclerotomy cuts and also you can see on the right hand side why it was called um, STT, thalamotomy. Uh, thalamus does not refer to the part of the brain but thalamus is the Latin word for chamber or cave and the application actually creates a, a chamber or a, a cave in the angle which uh, stays open. After the surgery all you have to do is to exchange the um, OVD with the irrigation aspiration tip and I will show you a short video how I do it in my clinic. This is at the end of a cataract procedure in a combined approach you see that the uh, pupil does not have to be extremely uh, small to visualize the angle. I deepen the anterior chamber with OVD 
and I visualize the angle with the gonioscope. The patient's head is already tilted and the microscope is tilted. And then I insert the probe into the anterior chamber. I identify and find the correct spot, the uh, pigmented part of the tubercular meshwork. I push the tip into the tissue and apply uh, position three on the foot pedal. And uh, you don't hear it now, but there will be three beeps indicating that the effect has been uh, sufficient. And you apply one pocket after the next in the uh, range of visualization next to each other. And as you will see on the left hand side, there is actually a little bit mild hemorrhage or backflow of blood out of the collector channels in the pockets that you have created successfully. Um, so six of these pockets and after that the probe is retracted and the anterior chamber is uh, irrigated with the IA tip at the end of the procedure. Uh, intraoperatively, as mentioned, we use myocol or carbocol. Uh, Postoperatively, the management is very si similar to a normal cataract procedure with tibromycin dexamethasone combination. However, it is important to give uh, pilocarpine uh, three times a day for four weeks, and this uh, helps keeping the pockets open. Now let's look at the study results from HFDS. Um, HFDS is not a very new technique. We have six years uh, long-term results by the inventor Boyan Pajic. And you see um, here these uh, 53 eyes that have been followed over six years. You see a very nice uh, pressure reduction from almost 30 uh, millimeters of mercury to a long-term pressure to 16, 17 millimeters of mercury. You also see on the right-hand side that in the first week or two weeks postoperatively, there can be a little bit of fluctuation with elevated or reduced pressure, but long-term, this is all very nicely stabilized. Almost 80% in this long-term study of 80% of the patients did not need any uh, anti-glaucomatous medication anymore six weeks after six years after the procedure and the IOP reduction was overall 42 percent. Out of the same study uh, a similar analysis uh, 50 percent of the patients actually were below 15 millimeters of mercury and the staggering 94 percent were below 20 and the uh, need for anti uh, glaucomatous uh, drugs re uh, reduced from 2.6 drugs average to uh, 0.5 drugs on average, which also means every second patient does not need any uh, pressure reducing drugs after six years. The uh, side effects are mild and, and temporary and temporary IOP uh, elevation is seen in 22.6%, as I said, over the first one to two weeks, but it's usually responding well to medical treatment. A little bit of uh, hypnea, which is usually disappearing over two weeks. A little bit uh, of temporary hypotension, but only in the first three days is observed. And sometimes, especially associated with excessive bleeding, there can be some fibrin reaction in the anterior chamber. This is a 48-month uh, follow-up study for HFDS combined with cataract surgery, and we see a similar image with a nice reduction from 25 to 16, 17 on average, with a little bit of fluctuation in the early phase and then a very nice and stable reduction. Again, the reduction of eye pressure was 38.8% and 84.9% of the patients achieved the target pressure below 21 uh, millimeters mercury. The same study here shows uh, a reduction of the need for anti-glaucomatous drug from 2.6 per patient of 0.5 after 48 months. HFDS as a standalone procedure over nine months 
show a si similar result, a reduction from 30 millimeters of mercury to 19. So we are not going to 10 or 12 like in a trabeculectomy, but in mild to moderate glaucoma, this is usually good enough. 90.7% of the patients achieved an IOP below 21 and the overall reduction was 39.5%. And I want to share uh, with you two data sets from users that have reported their results outside an official study. Dr. Manuel Justiniano, who performs about 10% of the catheter procedures now combined with HFDS, has reported uh, 60, uh, 36 eyes um, with a, um, a, a follow-up of more than three years and 77.8% were still medication-free after three years. Uh, the reduction of drugs was 84% and the IOP reduction was 36.9%. And Dr. Ribeiro reports 23 eyes with a combined procedure. And again, uh, after two years, the pressure is around 15 millimeters of mercury and 96% of the patients are within target still after two years. If you compare HFDS to other MIG procedures, the important difference is that with this procedure you overcome all three hurdles, uh, all three resistances to the outflow, uh, also the, the, the collector channels um, down to the sclera, while the trabectome, the eye stand, uh, only overcomes trabecular meshwork and Schlem's canal resistance or laser trabeculoplasty even uh, less deep with only an effect on the trabecular meshwork. If we compare the potential of IOP reduction to other procedures, we see that HFDS combined with FACO is significantly better with an IOP reduction of 30% compared to eye stent with only 14 to 15% or the Kahu blade with only 25%. Um, actually, only the up internal canal plus D is coming near to HFDS plus FACO with 30% pressure reduction. So in conclusion, HFDS is a simple, efficient and safe technique. It is not time consuming. If you combine it with FACO, it's only three, four minutes more. The learning curve is there, but relatively short and steep. Uh, HFDS is very co cost efficient because there is no implant involved that you have to buy on a repeated uh, base. HFDS is also repeatable. Um, if you feel that the pressure reduction was not enough, you can actually repeat it as a standalone procedure in the same eye. The safety uh, results are very promising uh, with this very minimal invasive procedure. Uh, complication risks are reduced a lot compared to traditional surgery like trabeculectomy. It is very successful in reducing the number of glaucomatous drugs involved, which is usually the main goal for the patients to get rid of the, of the uh, drops. And it is very practical because you can combine it very easily with cataract surgery, as mentioned. Thank you very much for your attention.